Hi there, my name is Anastasia, I'm an ASL teacher and CELPIP instructor. So in this video we're going to talk about listening tests in CELPIP, we're going to discuss all the tasks, go step by step and I'm going to give you some tips on how to succeed in passing listening tests in CELPIP. Let's start! Now we're going to do the test that is on the official CELPIP uh, site. So we're going to go there and find it, like prepare for CELPIP free practice tests. CELPIP general we are doing today for immigration. Start sample test. Uh, sample CELPIP general again. Start practice test A. Okay, start. And we today you're gonna you can do here like complete test or each section. So today we're gonna do only listening. All right, so here we have some listening test instructions. So for the test, let me show you what I prepared for the test. And in the test, they will give you uh, two pieces of paper like um, this format. Yeah, and you can uh, ask for more once you finish this. Yeah, but I was okay. It was enough, more than enough, because you don't have enough time <laughs> right and everything yeah uh, so um, I will use my note no, my notes and my pen so uh, I'm gonna do some notes here and I uh, uh, I um, invite you to do this test together with me so you can practice and you can see what answers you should choose and how you should choose them so let's start so we're gonna click next here. We're gonna watch the instruction video. Yeah, but we don't uh, like at the test. You're gonna do that, but not today. So to save time. Okay. So here is the practice task, and um, in the test you will not see display bar, but today yes, it is like practice, so we can see it. And here is the time uh, that we have to answer this question. So let's. Listen and answer. Unfortunately, I missed the concert last night. Yeah, so choose the sentences closest in meaning. Yeah, so this is paraphrased sentences. Unfortunately, I missed the concert. Missed the concert means that I didn't attend the concert last night. So let's go. So the first part listening. Yeah, we are talking about uh, we listen about problem solving. So we will hear conversation in three sections, in three parts, and, uh, and then we're gonna hear the questions and we need to answer. So let's listen to the first part. So it will be between a woman and a man. Yeah, the bus driver and a woman, the passenger. And uh, I strongly advise you to take notes. So I'm gonna do that and you should do that too. Please. Okay, let's listen. This is the last stop. Watch your step on the way out, ma'am. Thanks, driver. Do you happen to know where the little kids' playground is? I know it's in the park somewhere. Too bad I forgot my smartphone. There are a few playgrounds here. Do you mean the one next to the water fountain? No, the one I'm thinking of is just beside the petting zoo. You know, where there's goats and rabbits? Hmm. Yeah, I know there's a petting zoo, but I don't know where it is exactly. Anyway, I'm pretty sure there's a children's playground over there, past the restaurant. Maybe you could take a look over that way. Okay, great. Sounds good. Thanks very much. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So, let's go to the <clears throat> questions. So, question one. What is the woman eventually hoping to find? Like eventually at the end. So what is she hoping to find? So what would you choose? <laughs> She's hoping to find little kids playground. Yeah, so I would choose that. Yeah, <clears throat> not a fountain, not a restaurant, not a petting zoo. Yeah, little kids playground. Let's move. The next question. Question two. What best describes the driver's response? So, 
um, best describe and he makes a guess he refuses to help he shows the way he makes a guess yeah so um, he's not sure yeah but he makes a guess okay let's move on question three what will the woman probably do next <clears throat> so he said like um you um, know ask another passenger she was the only one yeah use her smartphone she said that she forgot it at home look for the rest and go to the water fountain so uh he said that it probably um around or oh, past the restaurant so she's probably gonna look for the restaurant <clears throat> Okay, let's listen to the next part. Oh, it's you again. What a coincidence. Are you finished work for the day? No, I wish. I've got a half hour break before my next trip, so I thought I'd get out of the bus and get some fresh air. My directions didn't help, eh? Are you lost? Yes, I've been looking, but I don't see any signs or maps posted. Tell you what, I'll look up the map on my smartphone. Yikes, you're nowhere near the playground. It's way on the other side of the park. Oh no, I have to meet someone there really soon. Yeah, looks like quite a hike. If you walk, you'll be late. But it says here that a free shuttle bus goes there every five minutes. That must be it over there, see? Do you mean that green bus? That big one? No, that's a tour bus. The shuttle bus would be the little red one. Mm-hmm, okay. So let's listen to the questions. How did the woman meet the man again? Okay, so he was taking a walk, looking for a, at a sign. No, no sign. She's, they said that there was no sign. Uh, only she was lost. Uh, she was going, no. So he was taking a walk in the park. Yeah? He said that he had a break and he wanted to get some fresh air. So. He was taking a walk in the park. And then next. Question five. Which statement is true? Looking for her smartphone. No, she lost it. Uh, she forgot it. She walked uh, to the far side of the park. She held her by... Uh, he helped her by using a smartphone. He spent his... Yeah, so he helped her by using a smartphone. Yeah, so she, he mm, looked at the maps on his smartphone yeah that's the answer the next one question six how should the woman get to the playground well maps and signs no take the green right in front now that's the tour bus yeah green bus is the tour bus we remember walk the far no walking will be late get on the a uh, little red shuttle bus yeah little red shuttle bus and the last um, section of this conversation, of this part. You're back. What happened? I thought you were catching the shuttle bus. I tried to, but it was broken down and out of service. There were lots of angry people, I can tell you. I'm glad you aren't one of them. Hop on then. You've got the bus all to yourself. I'm leaving now. I'll drop you off at the north gate. Is that near the playground? Yep. I checked because I don't want to give bad directions again. Sorry about that. So where should I go when I get off the bus? Okay, here's the deal. The north gate is right outside the petting zoo. Walk straight through the petting zoo and you'll see the playground right behind it. You'll be there in five minutes. So I won't be late after all. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's listen to the question. Question seven. Why does the bus driver tell the woman he is glad? <laughs> um, <clears throat> she didn't take the bus. So the rider sounds upset because his bus has been broken up. Um, because she does not seem angry. Yeah. So no to the all of the <laughs> below. Yeah. Because she doesn't seem angry. Yeah. So I'm glad that you are not one of them. Yeah. She she thought about angry people. Yeah. And he said, I'm glad that you're not 
Anchor that you're not one of them. Question eight. Will the woman go to the playground? Uh, well, yes. Uh, she'll arrive there on time. Uh, yeah. She arrived there on time. Yeah, she said that I won't be late after all. Yeah, I won't. I will not. Yeah, I won't be late after all. Okay, perfect. So that's the end. Yeah, that's the end of the uh, first section, first part of the listening. Yeah, so I did some notes, as you can see. Yeah, and I consulted them uh, during my like um, answers time. Yeah. So, listen in part two. Yeah, listen to a daily live conversation. <clears throat> Let's listen to the conversation between two co workers. Yeah, a woman is having some challenges finishing a project. Okay, let's start. Don't forget, take notes. You don't look so good, Anne. You look pale. Is everything all right with you? I'm okay. I just haven't slept much lately, and I guess it's starting to show. I've been working on a couple of projects, and the work is taking much longer than I thought it would. I've been up most nights writing the reports that are due the next week. You should get some more sleep. Why don't you finish the reports after work, before you go home for the day? I can't. I have to pick up my son at the daycare right after work. And when I get home, I have to fix dinner and watch my son until he falls asleep around 10. That's such a late bedtime. I know. He's five months old and we are still struggling with bedtime. Can your husband help you? He helps around the house a lot. He takes care of the cleaning, the laundry, and cooks breakfast after work every day. But I'm on my own with the bedtime routine, unfortunately. Breakfast after work? Yes, he works the night shift. He gets home around 6.30 in the morning and he cooks us breakfast before he goes to bed. Sounds like a very stressful situation. Can you ask for an extension on the project? It is pretty stressful, but I can't really ask for an extension. I'm being considered for a promotion and I'm afraid that if I ask for one, my boss might think I'm not competent to take on more responsibilities. I don't want to risk my chances. And if I get the promotion, my husband will be able to work day shifts again, which would be more convenient for our family. Is there anything I can do to help you? Not really, but thanks for the offer. My husband is taking Friday off and my mom is picking up my son for the weekend so I can finish the reports and hopefully get some sleep. Question one. Why was the man concerned? Uh-huh, so because I look angry, mm -mm, not angry, and well, sad, didn't finish her work. So uh, he said that you're not, uh, you don't look good, yeah? Um, you look pale, so the woman looked unwell, yeah? Not good, yeah, pale, unwell. Okay. Question two. What did the man suggest? Um, so he suggested them stay after work hours. Her husband for help. Woman take her work home. Um, stay after work hours. Yeah, he suggested that the woman should stay after work hours. Stay after work to finish it. And she said, no, I can't. Question three. Why hasn't the woman slept lately? Too much housework. Uh, no, he sleeps all right. Uh, too much housework. No, it doesn't help. No, she has to meet a yes. Yeah, so she has to meet a deadline. Yeah, uh, to uh, write the reports. Okay. Question four. Why can't the woman ask for an extension? Yeah, she's not competent. She's uh, yeah, so she is hoping to get a promotion. Yeah, so she wants to get a promotion and she doesn't want to risk that boss will think she's not competent. Yeah, okay. Question five 
What is her husband doing to help her finish the reports? Yeah, so he, he said that uh, my husband is taking Friday off, so he's taking a day off work to look after their son, right? So that is, and uh, for the weekend, to her uh, mother, yeah, like grandma is taking him. Yeah, so this is the answer. All right, so that was the end of listening part uh, two. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the next part three, listening for information. Again, we're gonna hear the conversation and then like six questions after it. <clears throat> and um, I want to tell you if it is too fast for you, if the speed is too fast, you can always pause this video and rewatch it or think before like I give an answer. Yeah, so. Um, you are able to do that. Yeah, you're free to do that. Okay, so listening part three, I'm going to hear a conversation. A man is interviewing a woman about perfectionism in the workplace. And the first two parts were like uh, were the easiest. Yeah, so let's listen to the third part. It is a bit harder. Thanks, Dr. Burns, for speaking to us about perfectionism in the workplace. To get us started, Perfection is typically seen as a positive thing. I mean, to be perfect is to make something the best it can be. However, do you think perfectionism is always positive? Well, not always. Although perfectionism is generally associated with success, it can also be very negative. Can you explain more about that? Our study has found that perfectionists tend to spend much more time on a task than non-perfectionists. Isn't the quality of the work better the longer you spend on a task? Not necessarily. Because perfectionists have such a high standard, they devote too much attention to details. In our study, it was common for perfectionists to run out of time and fail to complete their tasks. We also found that perfectionists had difficulties sharing work. Perfectionists tended to do all the work by themselves. Did that create problems in the workplace? Most definitely. First, we found that perfectionists are having trouble staying employed in large companies. They are seen as less cooperative and less capable. Second, we found that perfectionists feel more socially isolated. This leads me to our third main finding. Those who strive for perfection in the workplace are more prone to severe anxiety and even depression. Is it fair to say that perfectionism causes stress and may even cause depression? No, it is not a direct cause. We believe time management is the key to this puzzle. Our participants' anxiety and feelings of depression were often associated with fear of not having enough time to finish the task. So if they managed their time better, anxiety and depression could subside. We believe so, and that's the focus of our next research project. That is fascinating. Until then, any advice for perfectionists? I'd say to start with a careful and realistic plan. Prioritize what is needed to bring a project to completion and not spend too much time on details. <coughs> I also suggest that they try to work in groups and discuss their difficulties with other people. Okay, so we got, we'll listen. Let's look at the tasks. Question one. What is the woman's occupation? Okay, so she's a business manager, family doctor, researcher, journalist. So she said that she makes a research, yeah, on some uh, issue about time management, about perfectionism. So she's a researcher, yeah. And we're talking about science, and so she's a researcher. Let's go next. What? Does the woman say about perfectionists in her study? Successful? No, not always. Mm, their work is better because of the high star. Mm, no, no, they take longer time to do some work, and they productive group. No, they don't like share work. Often fail to complete. Yeah, so they often fail to complete tasks at work. Question three. According to the woman, what can perfectionism in the workplace do? 
I think job stability and social life help people with depression, um, help with making friendships, reduce people, um, affect job stability and social life. Yeah, perfectionists can affect job stability and social life. Yeah, not help people with depression, not reduce it again, like increase people's anxiety. Making friends, mm, no. uh, it affects job stability, yeah. So it has influence, yeah, on job, on work, yeah, and social life, like making friends, and working groups, or working teams, so on. Question four Why do perfectionists feel anxious? In a stressful workplace, they have insufficient friendship with the have poor time management, uh, yeah. So uh, they talk about stressful, yeah, that it is stressful for them. Mm, but um, I like in my notes I have a lot of stuff. So they said that they fail, yeah, to work like uh, with time management. So they have problems with time management. So because they have poor time management, it's like the best answer here. Question five: What does the woman suggest? perfectionists should do uh, focus on detail priority. yeah so she said like uh, the best option like uh, tips for them is to plan yeah and prioritize tasks question six what is the focus of the woman's next project skills level and identity develop social regulation become friendships and society on depression so, so the next project they say um, is about to focus like um, on time management yeah and um, lowering like about anxiety depression so um i would choose like the first one yeah time management skills and lowering anxiety let me look at the next um, they're all social isolation mm -mm. Friendship, no confidence. No, no. so uh, time management skills, yeah, and lowering anxiety of um, perfectionists. Yeah, and that was the last question. Yeah, so we are halfway through. Yeah, uh, we like have there are six tasks. Yeah, in the listening part, in the listening section. So we're gonna go. We're gonna listen to the fours. Yeah, listening to a news item. Let's start. And here we have the different kind of question. We'll have the drop down menu. I'm gonna show you. First, let's listen to the news item about a unique medical procedure. Scientists from Bionic Vision Australia reported that they were successful at implanting the world's first artificial eye. This eye is a very small computerized device that allows patients who lost their eyesight to have some vision. Diane Ashworth, who lost her sight 10 years ago, was the first of three patients to receive the device. Dr. Allen states Diane's early results are very promising and expects two more patients will receive the eye by the end of this year. Meanwhile, Diane Ashworth spoke to reporters about the moment when scientists turned the device on. She described it as an amazing experience and told reporters she hoped that two other patients will have similar results. Diane has not regained her full sight yet. She is only able to see shapes, such as the outlines of objects, and to detect movement. According to Dr. Allen, who installed the device, the present device is just a prototype. The prototype will be switched for a much better and clearer artificial eye in three more years. All right, so it was short let's look at the task so we have five sentences and we have drop down menu that we're gonna choose the answer from so the news item is about an australian doctor mm, medical breakthrough eye disease computer program it's not an eye disease it's an artificial eye uh yeah so a computer program mm, not it's about um uh, artificial eye yeah eye disease. medical breakthrough so it's about the medical breakthrough yeah like artificial eye wow like medical breakthrough um even if you don't know the word breakthrough you like the rest doesn't just don't fit here 
Okay, so before the surgery, Diane was unable to see with either eye, yeah? So she was blind, like completely this and this, yeah? So completely. <clears throat> One eye, so no, no, so with eye, the eye. Okay, so with the prototype, Diane won't be able to, so she will not be able to see movement shapes. So uh, now she said that uh, it was said that she can see shapes, outlines, and movements. So she can see details now, so yeah, so it is easy, yeah, she won't be able to see details. Diane's prototype will soon be replaced yeah replaced on the like actual okay and the two other patients are doing well not yet received cannot afford so they not have not yet uh, they have not yet received their prototypes yeah so because diane said that she hopes yeah that uh, they uh, gonna have the same experience, yeah, that they're gonna like succeed and see <laughs> what she see, what she sees. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, we have one more minute <laughs> to check. Or uh, so at the exam, you can you'll see the same <clears throat> window, yeah, and you can go next, yeah, or uh, if uh, the time is up, you like they will. Um, put you like next throw you next like automatically so let's go next uh, so part five listening to a discussion so here uh, this is very interesting and the most i i would i would say the the hardest part because it's a video two minute video you should watch two minute video then eight questions to answer i would suggest you uh once you see the screen you'll have like 30 seconds to read it I suggest you straight away to divide your piece of paper. So you're gonna, uh, there will be um, three people. So I want you to divide your piece of paper on the three columns and in these three columns to take notes on people and their comments. So uh, I would like you to um, notice if it's a man, or a woman like on the um, left so you can see the video yeah so woman man woman for example you can see woman <clears throat> her name if it is what she's wearing like blue t-shirt for example man uh, checked shirt green green checked shirt and this woman for example a red dress yeah so names and what they are wearing you should write it down right away like when you see the video the first few seconds you, you saw it just write it down it, it is it is essential and then you should write down their um, ideas yeah their comments what they talk about so i think uh, we should use, for example, she said, I think we should use red pen. She and he said, I disagree. And you write red pen, then um, an arrow, disagree. I want green pen and, and so on. Yeah. So you should write down the ideas and draw um, errors, uh, draw arrows who agree with whom. It is very important and you will need this table once you gonna do the task once you answer the questions so let's try i uh, i hope you prepared your tables your piece of paper yeah with the tables and we're gonna write it down yeah and uh, um then we're gonna check what you wrote down so let's start well that was a good session eh all 24 members present, eight conversation groups of three, a full house. How'd it go for you, Diane? Our group spoke French for more than half the time. 40 minutes of French and 20 minutes of English. But, hey, I'm not complaining. I need all the French I can get. Hey, your French is just as good as mine. Keep practicing. A few more weeks and you'll sound like Nicholas here. Oh. And remember, it's even harder for the allophones here. I mean, they're learning a third language. Allophones? 
They're people whose first language isn't English or French. Like Marta, she's an allophone. She grew up speaking Ukrainian, then she learned English, and now she's trying to pick up French. Marta was in my group. She's amazing. Her French is way better than mine. She said her friend wants to join. Well, that makes six new members who want to join, and they're all allophones. Problem is, we can't ask people to start bringing their own chairs. <laughs> Maybe we need to look at a bigger restaurant. I think we should just limit the membership to 24. Can't we start a wait list? There's enough turnover. Colleen and Liam are going back to Germany next week. The thing is, if you put prospective members on a wait list, they might just join a different club. I know from working at the community center, wait lists are unreliable. You can have six people on a wait list. When you call them, none of them are interested anymore. So when people ask to join, we should let them in right away. How about meeting at a separate location on different nights? Well, if all the new members are allophones, maybe we should change the format. Right now, each conversation group has one native English speaker, one native French speaker, and one allophone. But maybe in the new location, it should just be for allophones. No, we need to mix them in with native speakers, like we're doing now. The allophones kind of inspire the others by their example, and they're great translators. For the next little while, we'll just have some groups with three, some groups with four until we get more native speakers in. We'll need to find a second location for a meetup on alternate nights. Some people can meet on Tuesdays and Saturdays. The new group could meet Wednesdays and Sundays. So I have this big, yeah, the table this big. You see it? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> Uh, I draw some errors, yeah, so I put the um, type of clothes they're wearing, because that's important, now you, you'll see why. Let's move to the tasks. Okay, so eight questions. What is the main topic being discussed? What to learn, where to meet, whether to grow, whom to invite? Yeah, like, hmm, <laughs> hmm, what would you answer? <laughs> okay, so what to learn. Now they learn French, where to meet, whether to grow, whom to invite. I, I would say where, where to meet because they're talking about bigger restaurant, second location, ultimate night. Yes, yeah, so where to meet. In the discussion, what were the three speakers mainly doing? Considering their options, disputing and decision, estimating their numbers, sharing encouragement. So I would say it's not sharing encouragement. Surely, estimating the numbers, mm, not really. Disputing a decision, uh, they were not talking about one decision. I would say they're considering their options because everyone gave an option, yeah, what to do, and they are just discussing their options, they're considering their options. Okay, which saying would the man in the sweater probably agree with? Okay, the man in the sweater. Which one? Yeah, so this is the Nicolas Yalek long sleeve sweater. So he agree with, yeah, we can say, yeah, 24 limit, wait list, yeah, change format. So, whole hands victory now, small is less is more, the more the merrier, bigger is better. Two companies, there are three the crowd. So he, he talks about the limit, yeah, then. We're gonna use this one. Small is beautiful, less is more. Yes, yeah? so he advised, yeah, he offered to uh, limit, yeah, to limit the number of people. Okay. What best describes the woman's attitude to Marta? Mm. Admira she's amazing, she said. She's amazing. So it's like admiration. Yeah? <clears throat> Who must be the best speaker of French? The woman in the video, the man wearing shorts, the woman the, the man wearing sweater. Um, the woman they talked about. <clears throat> yeah, Marta is amazing. She is better than I. Yeah, best speaker. Must be yeah. The woman they talk about. <clears throat> uh, what is definitely true of the club's elephones? They all trying to improve their French. They do not like serving as translators. Now, they said they are good translators, they lose interest while on wait list, <clears throat> they outnumber the other two groups. Mm, I would say they outnumber, yeah, they outnumber the other two groups, yeah. Because they're 
a lot of them yeah six new yeah all elephants in my group yeah so they outnumber the other two groups <clears throat> Uh, what do the woman and the man in the sweater disagree on? So they, the woman, <clears throat> yeah, and the man in the sweater. What do they disagree on? Yeah, we're gonna look at our notes. So they disagree on keeping wait list. Yeah, so she offers. Yeah. He offers the wait list and she disagrees. Yeah, so keep in wait list. What does the man wearing short sleeves agree to do? Follow for the support club. Mm -hmm. Start additional meetups at the second location. Yeah, Tuesday, Saturdays, Wednesday, Sundays. Yeah, so additional meetups at the second location. Okay, yeah, we don't have any time, but we can revise and maybe change something. Yeah, so what do you think? <clears throat> let's look uh, start from the first one the main topic the main topic whether to grow i would say um it is probably gonna be whether to grow because they're talking about numbers and not like where like uh, not the location what location which restaurant to pick but whether to grow whether to grow or not should we open the new location or not yeah so i guess that is the right answer all right so um they're considering their options yeah i guess that is right um so this is more <clears throat> okay who must be the best speaker of french the one they talked about um mm -hmm. so marta yes so this woman is amazing but they also, woman, woman wearing short sleeves, the man wearing a sweater. <clears throat> so I guess that uh, could be man with the long sleeves. Must be the best speaker of French or the woman they talked about. Yeah, so that is like the dubious question. And like the video is always hard, yeah. Um, mm -hmm, they talked about okay, so let's um keep that, yeah. If it's like one mistake, that's okay, and it's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> All right, so let's go forward <clears throat> to the last part, yeah. Listening for viewpoints, you will hear a report once three minutes long, and then six questions we're gonna answer. So please, let's take notes. Controversial bill being proposed to reduce jail time for prisoners. A new bill proposed by Paul Carter from the New Democratic Party is bound to stir a great deal of controversy. Mr. Carter, who represents a project called Reading for Freedom, proposes a novel way to approach jail terms. Some prisoners would be able to shorten their sentences by up to 36 days a year by reading books. Inmates in provincial prisons in Ontario would receive three days off their sentence for each book they finish reading. They could choose from a selection of 12 works of literature, philosophy, science, and classics, such as Shakespeare and Tolstoy. But reading alone would not be sufficient. In order to demonstrate that prisoners have read and comprehended each work, they would be required to write an essay that must make use of paragraphs, proper grammar, and spelling. Prisoners' access to the program would depend on the type of crime they committed and also prisoners' behavioral record after incarceration. The key purpose of the project is to reduce conflict among prisoners and encourage personal development. Though innovative, the project has already met strong opposition from politicians law enforcers, and the general public. Many wonder how reading novels can genuinely prepare prisoners for real life after being reintroduced in society. They ask how reading Shakespeare could help the prisoners find jobs after prison. Finally, some, like Evelyn Breach, a political science student at University of Toronto, questioned how fair the system would be 
for those who are already disadvantaged. People who did not have access to proper education in the first place, or are not fluent in the English language, would not be able to read these books. This would be unfair for many Aboriginals and immigrants. According to Evelyn, the program does not give equal opportunities to everyone and could further victimize the ones whom the system has already failed. Chris Kendi, who directs the library system at penitentiaries in Ontario, is more optimistic about the project and says the main strength of the program is that it can change the prisoner's viewpoint. He says an inmate can leave prison more bitter and knowledgeable about crime or enlightened by the world and the meaning of life. He adds that in his 20 years of experience working in prison libraries, he has seen books absolutely change people's lives, and he truly believes this program will do just that. The first reading of the provincial legislature is scheduled for Thursday, and the debate will continue in the weeks to come, when representatives from the general public and different branches of government are consulted. If the bill passes, it will come into force as early as next year across the province. All right, so six questions, the last one. Okay, this is a story about a law that forces prisoners to read books, proposed law to reduce some prisoner sentences, men who spent... Um, yeah, so this story about law that forces prisoners... So it's not law, it's bill, yeah, it's like proposal, yeah, it's a bill. So it's proposed law to reduce some prisoner sentences. Prisoners' access to the program would depend on their frequency. <laughs> no, knowledge of government's well, previous reading that crime and behavior in jail. Yeah, so it's uh, on their type of crime. Yeah, and um, their behavior. Um, the purpose of the project is to diminish conflict from one person who grows, teach prisoners to read and write. But no, not teach because they. Um, like, won't do that yet, they just read and it says like they don't have equal opportunity. Increase prisoners level of education now, help prisoners find jobs where they live, uh -uh. diminish conflict and promote personal growth, I would say. <laughs> yeah, uh, to reduce, yeah, reduce conflict, diminish conflict here, yeah, promote personal de development, personal growth. Okay, so the force, yeah, critics argue that the project should focus more on the literature. Okay, not the first and the last one. Penalizes the creates conflict and educate. Penalizes, yeah, penalizes those with poor English language skill, yeah. So no equal uh, opportunity, no education, who doesn't have education or not fluent in English. So I would say this one. Chris Candy, who worked in prisons libraries for and believes the project. No, so he's optimistic. Yeah, it, is, it was said that he's optimistic about it. Uh, earn more money. Mm, no. It will transform some prisoners' life. Make a prison ministry. Okay, we'll transform some prisoners' life. Yeah. They enlighten. Yeah, they change, enlighten, and change people's lives. Yeah, so I'm, I'm reading from my notes. Yeah. If the deal becomes law, yeah, so if the bill becomes law, it will apply to apply to the whole country. Um, so it says like uh, it's spread uh, across the province. So this law will apply to the whole province, yeah, only to the province, not to the country. All right, so we are in time. Yeah, so we have forty seconds left. Yeah, to uh, look through it. Yeah, to maybe change something to check yeah but i'm pretty sure in this sense i'm not sure in the video here yeah, in the previous but these are good okay so um let's finish all right so you can in the test you can go forward but not back yeah so that's it the robot. Okay, so the first part is right, so you can see, like only here you can see the right answers, and the test you won't be able to do that, uh, only in the practice. Okay, yeah, oh, one mistake, okay, so part five, yeah, the listening, mm, the man wearing a sweater, yeah, the woman that talked about, okay, the man wearing a sweater is better speaker of French, okay, yeah, so that was the best question for me, and that's okay. <clears throat> so the rest are 
good yeah well done so we have like 37 out of 38 yeah and uh, approximate self -up score 10 or 12 so that's perfect yeah we are finishing here okay so we did the whole listening test um i'm like give you congratulations my my applauses for you so we wrote like like my notes are like one page and the other page yeah like two pages of paper <laughs> and um <clears throat> i'd like to point out that um that's okay to uh, doubt that's okay to make mistakes and i hope that my advice here that my advice in this video will help you to succeed will help you to achieve your score in listening if that's what you're struggling with um <clears throat> also i'll show you some uh, i'll leave some links on the uh, how to practice listening on the some listening tasks below in the description and captions also i'll leave a link uh, to my uh, site uh, when you can find information and my services and my prices for preparing students for selfie uh, my course yeah and some group lessons individual lessons it, like all three options are possible and, uh, i want i'd like to point out that in the listening i got uh 12 uh mark yeah so i was pretty surprised because um i have doubts so it's um, most of the tasks most of the questions are kind of controversial but once you have an ear you can listen you can practice your listening skills practice paraphrase and once you know the types of the um tasks you uh, you can succeed because you know that you're gonna have the video and you know that you're gonna you need to draw the table to be able to like to answer the questions right because it, it's hard yeah to memorize what who was wearing what and who like what they talked about so you need to take notes so i hope that my advice that, that my tips help and uh, will help you in future and um hope to see you in the next video in the next lessons for self-pip self-pip reading and some tips and so on all right so that's it for now have rest and learn english bye bye